Luke here with the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel and it is a beautifully sunny day here in the Alaskan bush. It's about 25 degrees Fahrenheit. So it is just absolutely perfect weather and a gorgeous day to do some bushcraft and survival camping. Look at these fox tracks right here. Got this fresh skiff of snow here from last night. And look at it. There's probably three sets of tracks right on here. Oh, it's so nice to get out and about on sunny days like this. But it comes with its own set of problems. You can actually go snow blind out here. It's so sunny and there's so much snow. So you get two or three nice days in a row, you'll get sunburned on your eyeballs. Hurts like the devil. Whoa. There's a little red squirrel right there. Could have shot the guy, but man, I've eaten them before. They're not very good. Alaskan squirrels are not like the ones down in the lower 48. They're scrawny and stringy and don't taste very good. We must be near a frozen river. Look at the size of these cottonwood trees. You only get big cottonwood trees near water. Oh, here's the river. Yeah, see all the snow machine tracks? These frozen rivers become our highways in the wintertime. I'm gonna walk along this river a little bit. Might find a little log jam, would give me a lot of firewood. Uh, might find a gravel bar to build my shelter. Maybe some open water, so I got nice, easy water sources. But look at that view, huh? Yeah, Alaska does not disappoint. We'll check it out. This dark, dry, exposed rock on the side of the riverbank is so much warmer than just a few feet over there in the snowbank. It's early morning, but still, just that little bit of sunlight we've gotten so far has warmed this up a lot. By the end of the day, this is going to be really, really pleasant. I'd really like to find a flat, dry spot to build a shelter for tonight, but I wanted to be near some deadwood so I don't have to hike forever to get my firewood and materials for my shelter. Check this out. See all of this? See every one of these willow trees has the bark stripped off it. This inner layer of the bark of the willow tree is edible. And it's one of the only food sources you can find here in the wintertime. So all the animals that don't hibernate or migrate out, they eat these willow trees. And this was all done by moose. You can see how high up the tree it is. But this is what the snowshoe hares eat as well. When you get a big patch of willows like this, you're gonna find moose and you're gonna find snowshoe hare and you're gonna find the predators that feed off them. The inner bark of these willow trees also contains aspirin. Especially if you get a nice green shoot, you scrape off all that green bitter inner bark, you can suck on it if you have a headache and it's supposed to help a little bit. But it takes a lot of willow bark to equal one aspirin tablet. So you gotta hear some moderately old moose prints. Big pile of moose poop. If you ask most Alaskans which animal they're most afraid of, it's not the bears, it's the moose. They can be so nasty and they're just massive animals. And they don't mind being really close to humans. Grizzly bears usually just run away as soon as they smell or hear you. Moose will sit there and pick a fight with you. Well, let's check it out, we got some dead wood here. Might be able to do something with this. Tell you what, this might not be a bad place to sleep for the night. Got a flat sandy bit right there. Got some water, some dead wood. We're obviously way too close to the river to build a permanent structure, but I think this might be perfect for just a night or two. It looks pretty nice. I'm gonna drop my pack and explore a little bit. Oh, now that's a big fresh moose print right there. Look at that. You know, shotguns are a great survival gun because they're so versatile. You can use them for different things depending on which bullets you use. This is a number six shot, two, three quarter inch bullet. Great for rabbits and small birds and squirrels. This is a three inch, one ounce slug. Protect you from grizzly bears, moose. You can use it to kill deer. Just gonna throw that in here since we're seeing all this moose sign. 
just in case. In a few months, this spot I'm walking is gonna be under about four or five feet of water. And this is gonna be a fast moving 30 foot wide river. When the water all freezes, a lot of these rivers dry right up. Plenty of fuel. There's some good dead trees right there as well. Tell you what, it's so nice to not need my snowshoes. Clear days like this, the temperature fluctuations get huge. It's really beautiful in the daytime, gets bitterly cold in the night. So I gotta make sure I build a good shelter while the weather's nice. Some more moose prints. See how deep they are? Moose are like 2,000 pounds, so when they step in the snow, they sink right to the bottom. It makes it so hard for them to walk in this deep snow. They really like walking along those river banks because it's just so much less energy. There's so many willows around. It's a really good chance a moose will come wandering up the river bank at night. Check it out. We're starting to get pussy willow buds on the willow trees. Oh, the snow's starting to thaw out. Oh, the snow's starting to thaw out and I'm starting to sink a little bit. Let's get out of the sun. So you stand on the stuff that's in the shadows, it's solid. Stand on the snow in the sunlight, you sink. Stuck the barrel of my gun in the snow. It's nice about a break action, you can clear it out so easy. Nice little trail snack. This is a Cornish pasty, traditional pastry in Southwest England. They're a great trail snack because you can eat them cold and with dirty hands. Mm -hmm. mm. This is like a pork and raisin one, a little non-traditional. Come check this out. That is the first butterfly of the year. This is a nata, it's a traditional Japanese hatchet. I bought it in Kyoto in 2018 when we did our world tour video. Oh, it's, it's like a greenhouse underneath this tarp. It is so warm in here. Man, it feels so good and warm here on this gravel bar. I can't even begin to describe it here. I need to bust out my thermometer and show you guys. So I've got two thermometers and you can see right here, the ambient air temperature is about 34 degrees Fahrenheit. So just slightly above freezing. But I put another thermometer here in the sunlight over here on the rocks. Check this out. Look at this. On the gravel bar, it is 80 degrees, 80 degrees Fahrenheit.
So there's a 46 degree difference between the temperature of the air and the temperature of this riverbank. That is massive. Well, I'll tell you what, it feels pretty amazing on this riverbank right now, but all that's gonna change tonight when the sun sets. It's supposed to get down to about 14 degrees Fahrenheit. So we need to store as much of this heat as we can and store it in our shelter. I'm gonna show you how to do that really easy. All right, we need to get a fire started. I'm gonna do it with a piece of steel and a flint rock here. Got my char cloth to catch the spark and turn it into an ember. I've got some shredded up jute to turn that ember into a flame. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build up a nice big bonfire right there where I'm gonna sleep. It's gonna heat up the ground, store a lot of energy down in the rocks. It's also gonna dry out the ground and it's gonna make it really warm inside the shelter. Plus I'm gonna boil some water to drink because I forgot to bring any. I leaned over, put that pot on the fire, and a gust of wind blew the flames up on my face, and I think I burned some of my bangs. Whew, smells like it. Well, I got a nice fire going and plenty of room to burn it. I'm gonna throw whole logs on there and let the fire cut my logs up for me. Save me some energy. <sighs> oh, that's good water. This is one of the prettiest spots I've camped in a long time. It's really lovely weather. Well, that's burning pretty good. Some people will tell you that if you use river rocks for your campfire ring, the rocks will explode. We're gonna put that to the test today, aren't we? There we go, just move the fire over a little bit, bury the coals with a little bit of dry sand, and we're gonna have a really hot foundation put our shelter on top of. If you guys wanna see more about this trick, I did a video where I slept out in the snow with only a wool blanket using this trick.
Well, it looks like the sun's about to disappear over the mountains. I've got a nice pile of firewood over by the fire. Just need to get a big pile of tinder so I can start my fire in the morning without having to go look for firewood. But I think after that, we're ready to get some dinner and I'm hungry. The only thing worse than having to get out of your bed in the morning is having to get out of your bed and go look for firewood in the morning. Oh. Oh. Alaska has the best tasting water, I swear. Mm. Oh. Alright, I think it's time to go start dinner. And I need a steak stick. Well, I have brought a ton of food for dinner. I've got a massive seasoned steak, got a sweet potato with marshmallows, brown sugar, and butter, and cinnamon. And it's all wrapped up in tin foil. And I've got a bunch of bread dough here, and I've got uh, some honey butter. Got some honey butter here. I'll loosen the lid a little bit and just sit it by the fire like so. Good. All right. Whew. Ah, seasoned meat, honey butter, fresh bread. These are good things. Ah. Oh. That was pretty good. I think I might need another piece of bread. There we go. That's looking good. There you go. Campfire version of sweet potato casserole with the melted marshmallows and butter and cinnamon. It's fabulous. Just got to let this cool down. Oh, well, that's nice. Mm. Bread, steak, and potatoes. I think I need to wash my hands. <laughs> it's my Japanese hunting knife. It was a gift from a friend when I was in Kyushu. It's a real shark skin on the handle. It's like sandpaper. Excellent grip. Love this knife. Tell you what guys, it is warm in here. My legs are cooking. This sand is just hot with the coals underneath it. And I've got the heat of the fire. And then it's just not that cold out here because I'm sitting on this baked sandbar. It's just absolutely great. Ah, I can't believe how light it is. It's 8.30 and I can still see outside. It just changes so quick this time of year. Two months ago, sun was setting at 4 o'clock. In a couple months, the sun's going to be setting at 11 o'clock. Oh my goodness. Oh, I am tired.
my socks are dry, I'm full, I'm warm. I'm just gonna go ahead and get my sleeping bag here. This has been a really nice day. Oh, I'll tell you what guys, I think I might be getting a little bit of a cold. My nose is stuffy, my throat's scratchy, and I'm just really, really tired. I think I'm just gonna hang out here and watch the fire, and just relax a little bit. Well guys, it's gotten late and properly cold, but it is really warm in here. Between the heat coming up through the ground and the fire and the heat reflector stone wall I made, I mean, it's just, it's really cozy in here. And I was originally planning on, on sealing this up on both sides like a little tent and then just pulling the hot rocks inside to, to warm things up, but it's, I don't think it's gonna be necessary. So I'm just gonna go to bed and I'm gonna run a little time lapse and I'll see you guys in the morning. <laughs> Tell you what, I slept really warm last night. The air is pretty darn cold, but the ground is, is just not bad. The coals I buried have really gone out, but it's still, it's just not that cold. It's like a 40 degree ground instead of a 14 degree ground. The rocks just hold the heat really well. And just getting a thawed out warm spot to set up a shelter makes all the difference in the world. I never pulled down the side of my tarp and the fire went out and I was just really good last night. It was, it was really nice. But I'll tell you what though, I am definitely sick. My throat hurts so bad and I am so stuffy and I'm really tired. I need a sick day. <laughs> I don't feel good. I'm gonna make some breakfast, though I don't have much of an appetite. And uh, we're just gonna try to build up some strength for the hike home. Oh, looks like we got a snowstorm coming in. Whew. Fried smoked pork jowls wrapped in bread, smothered in honey butter. I could eat that every day. Oh, that's so good. Mm. Yeah, I better pack up my sleeping bag. I don't want to get snow on it. Got a fierce little cold and a bit of a hike ahead of me. I'm gonna have some herbal tea. Well, I used river rocks around my campfire and I lived to tell the tale. None of them exploded. Certain rocks will pop or explode if you put them in a fire, 
but it has more to do with what the stone is made out of and less about whether you pulled them out of a river or, or whatever. Well, there we go. That was a good campsite. One of the warmest winter shelters I've ever slept in. I got a lot of hiking to do and not a lot of energy to do it with, so I better get going. Uh, without the sunshine, that open water's freezing up. One thing that can get you stranded in the springtime is you go hiking in the morning when the snow is hard and it's really easy to walk. And then by the afternoon, the snow softens up and you start sinking down in it. And then you can't get back. So you hike out in the morning, hike back in the morning. I think those are some fresh coyote tracks since this morning. I'm going to go home and take large quantities of cold medicine and get some rest. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys want to see more videos from the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel, make sure to click subscribe because we put out new videos every Saturday morning. And check out some of our playlists for more camping and survival videos. I'll put links in the video description to that below. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next Saturday morning. If you like this video, don't forget to check out the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel where we have hundreds of videos just like this. And don't forget to click subscribe so you can see other great videos every Saturday morning. And hit that bell button and you'll get notifications. Thanks for watching.